Welcome back to the big board and uh, Waterloo campaign 1815 from C3 IMAX Zoom number 33. <clears throat> Checking in on, let's see, beginning of the fourth turn, which would be the 4 p.m. Sorry, the 4 p.m. What am I even saying? The fourth turn, June the 16th p.m. turn is where I think we're, we're at. Uh, interesting set of maneuvers that occurred over the last, last turn. I know the lighting's not fabulous but uh, there's not much I can do about it uh, not going to help so Blucher and his forces moved in from uh, the right hand side of the screen in and around in an attempt to uh, sort of box in number one the, the French move to the to the right and to the north but also to link up with the the coalition the British forces and the British as well moved their forces down and forward. So now Orange is uh, uh, now uh, to the southwest of Quatre Bras. Uh, Wellington's reserve army is in uh, Genap, the town behind it. Knoxbridge is all the way down here. I can't read that from here, Marbe or something like that. And uh, we've all now got a Hill coming onto the map shortly as well. So the the Napoleonic effort, uh, Napoleon's effort to split the two forces and have an engagement, you know, sort of worked, uh, but but hasn't worked, right? Uh, all these forces here, there was a lot of in this game. You, you know, one person moves a unit, then another person moves a unit, and you keep moving until such time as that you a you don't want to move anymore, or b you can't move anymore, and so there's a lot of uh, second guessing and toing and froing between the players here to decide who, where are you going to go and, and which which direction are you really going so it does uh it does require a little bit of the brain bifurcation exercise to uh sort of uh, outguess yourself when you're playing solo but playing a pose which i have done uh really uh, gives you a wonderful uh, kg kind of uh, suspenseful movement uh, mechanic that you're not really sure what the enemy's going to do or where they're going to go. And the way that we had this set up here was that in the end, we moved uh, Gerard in to the middle, and uh, lo which basically locked uh, three units. It was one Prussian unit here, one here, the cab is here, and then another chappy here, that's uh, Thielman, and locked those guys in by pushing him here. And that then allowed us and so this all sort of evolved, and that allowed us then to bring Duro around, bring uh, Grouchy's, uh, Grouchy's, uh, oh, what the fuck the guy's name is, I don't know, uh, uh, bring his uh, uh, cavalry around to support a specific attack against this hex, but then also maybe uh, be able to flank flank next turn. Uh, Bluka saw that threat and moved Bulo from up here, where really not in frame very well are we sorry let me try and get in frame from here down to here and let me try and zoom in just a little bit right so so this whole movement area around here was really interesting and, and, a, and a lot of fun uh subsequently uh the 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 coalition decided that they would halt uh fin end their movement uh, at leaving these, uh, Wellington decided to leave his units back here in place uh, to see what evolved with uh, with the Prussian conflict in and around Lingi, funnily enough. So what happened then is we roll a die and that will give us the uh, remaining number of moves that's going to be available for the, uh, for the French player. And... We did that, had just enough moves to down here, uh, uh, just north of the Sombre River here, to get uh, a couple of units in place to attack the uh, Zeiten, who was uh, in this village, in this town here. And that allowed us to uh, clear him out and actually uh, uh, put have him become blown, which means he'll be off the map for two turns and he will return. Uh, subsequently, <coughs> this attack over here, Eliminated uh, P 
purchase the second core. So he's out of the game. So now the Prussians are down to just three cores on the map, one coming back in two turns. But, you know, you've still got Wellington's big, uh, uh, highly capable set of uh, forces. Each one of those stars is going to represent a die roll modifier, which is pretty significant in this game. It's going to... Uh, it's going to make a difference if you get if you fight Hill and have Wellington supporting. That's a plus four on the dice, so that's a big advantage. The the French have to be super. Whoop, excuse me, we're having we're having camera issues. Sorry about this, guys. It's I've got this crappy stand I bought, and it doesn't like me very much. All right. So I, I wanted to share that with you mainly just because uh, the, there are some aspects to this that are, are really interesting when it comes to movement. Combat is pretty straightforward, and it, it's uh, you know it's obviously highly abstracted, and you 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 do get the the value of combined arms, but you're dealing at the core level, so it's it's innately combined arms because you have artillery, cavalry, and infantry in each of these cores. And then you'll have cavalry cores as well, which will obviously add some some bonus value to the situation, as the case may be. Uh, so let's see here. So I think that is what happened there, and it's uh, it's uh, off to the next turn. You can see the actual progress. Seem felt it feels kind of slow. You know, day day one a.m. turn, and here we are, day two a.m. turn, following this black line. <coughs> And uh, we'll we'll see what evolves over the course of the, the this this turn. All right, cheers.